Hi guys, um, welcome to Bira Online. So I guess this is going to be my second official vlog. Um, so today I just wanted to talk about a number of things, you know, today being International Day of the Girl Child. Um, it's been celebrated since October of 2012. And for those of you who know me in my social circles, you will know that I'm a very big advocate for educating the girl child. Um, but every time I post these issues on either my social media platforms, you know, within the comment section there, you always find somebody who is saying, uh, but what about the boy child? Has the boy child been forgotten? So I just want to talk about the reason why educating the girl child is good for the boy child and trust me this is coming from somebody who has two boy children so i just want to tell you a little story so i come from a place in uganda called kasese it's in the western part of uganda and back in 2011 i happened to have emceed an event um, in kasese that was organized by isis wiki um, that's an international organization um, that helps people living in vulnerable communities and you know while we were emceeing this event um, it just so happened that this event was tied to gender-based violence and things like that and uh, you know there were numbers about child marriages that came up it wasn't just about the numbers it was a three-day event and on the second day of this event we happened to have gone deep into the rural areas of this town um, to find out from these girl child mothers, we call them child mothers or young mothers, you know, some of them were the ages of 13, 16, 17, and they had three full children. And you know, the question that strikes you is at what age was she when she had her first child? So there was this one particular girl who was 13 years old and she had a one year old baby. And we had gone to film some of the uh, issues that affect them the most in those parts of, of, of their villages. So it just so happened that this girl who was married off by her father for two goats, two goats, one, two. And this is because he owed someone money and so he married off his daughter to square the date. Just imagine that, like picture that situation where a girl has no say and then she's subjected to being a mother when she's still a child herself. So I'm, I'm thinking if she was 13 and she had a one year old, that means she gave birth when she was still 12 years old. So when did she get pregnant? She was forced into a marriage, forced into motherhood and you know, we were trying to convince her to go back to school, but she said, you know, right now when she goes back to school, everybody would be laughing at her because she has a baby and, and things like that. And by the way, this was 2011. So how many years has it been since 2011? And I'm sure there's several cases just like this one I just mentioned happening in different parts of the world. I've lived in Kenya for the past six and a half years and I've heard and seen very devastating stories about child mothers, about, you know, the girl child being discriminated against. And, you know, it starts at this low level. And it continues what is the effect of this on the boy child is that these girls should they give birth to boy children the possibility of these boy children not being able to understand the importance of having their moms not being subjected to forceful choices is something that they might not understand and so educating the girl child is important for the boy child in a sense that when a girl is educated and she gets to a stage where she becomes a mom she's able to make informed choices bring up her children making informed choices so they know that they're living in an equal world and the boy child has not been forgotten because I believe that the boy child has opportunities that could come out of educating everybody. And you know, it's not like 
the boy child has been forgotten entirely. The issue here is that women have been sidelined or discriminated against, especially in African countries, because of the cultural norms. And these cultural norms are the biggest challenge that we face today. Because from the moment that a girl is born in rural parts or most rural parts of Africa, it simply means that if they actually um, get to an age of understanding then they start to divide the roles for them the girl will do dishes the boy will i do not know fetch water i don't know if the boys even fetch water in rural africa because even that is subjected to the girl child or the women so this division of roles starts at a very young age and it actually grows in the mind of the boy children that they always think that girls will always cook girls will always do the dishes but i would like to encourage people living in communities where you can actually impact other people's lives that it doesn't have to be that way i'm so lucky that in our family when we were growing up you know this issue of the boy sits and watches TV while the girl does the dishes was actually not the case. Um, all of my siblings, we were all brought up to know that everybody will do dishes and there will be turns for that. When you finish eating your dinner or whatever meal, you pick up your plate, take it to the sink and wash it and put it <laughs> right on the sink for it to dry. Um, the same applied to making food. When we got to that age where we were now interested in cooking food, there was no business of this food must be made by the girl child and this will be made by the boy child so I think when we start to eliminate those um, discriminations it's one way of actually saying that you're not as we are not a patriarchal society but we are a society that actually understands the needs ask yourself this why is it that when you're born girl or boy your parents are so happy, you know, and when they are taking you to school, they never ask this girl, what do you want to be when you grow up or what do you want to do this when you grow up? You know, they do not actually sideline and say because you're a girl, then you're just going to go to school and then become a housewife because then what's the point of taking the girl child to school? So it goes beyond um, us looking at it as we are concentrating on the girl child more but knowing the value that comes from educating the girl child especially in the rural parts of of our country so if we're going to move past the stage where we are saying all the attention is being given to the girl child we need to ask ourselves how best we can change this because if we do not change it we are still going to talk about educating the girl child for the next decade for the decade after that until we actually can see that girls are being given a platform to make their own choices and to be able to determine for themselves what kind of future they want and not somebody deciding for them who they should be when they grow up because we all know that poverty levels in rural parts of Africa are what they are and part of the reason is because of the lack of economic empowerment for the women who live in rural areas the reason why this is so still goes back to the same thing cultural norms and also lack of a good education and when we actually educate the girl child let me tell you the kind of impact it's going to have it's going to have an impact on the girl herself it's going to have an impact on the family of the girl and the community you know it's not the same thing as when you pick if say you have five five children two of them are boys and three of them are girls and in the normal rural setting you decide that since the three are girls they will not go to school so you're going to concentrate on the boys you know you cannot be sure that these boys are going to turn out all right so educating or giving your children equal opportunities and equal platforms is the same as impacting an entire community and this is what we need to encourage in rural parts of 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 Africa.
and generally the rest of the world um, because what we're seeing is that the girl child is not being given equal opportunities in most of the developing parts of the world and this is bad for us because there's absolutely no way we're going to alleviate poverty if we're still looking at these kinds of discriminations um, for us to be able to e empower people economically we also need to educate them and not educate one side and say you know we'll just educate the boys and then forget about the girls because if we forget about the girls who are at the end of the day going to be spending nearly 70% of the time with the children then we are not going to achieve anything an educated mind actually helps a lot um, as we know most African countries face um, or most developing countries face issues to do with uh, poverty with malnutrition with you know you can name them all um, but picture a woman who is educated in the rural parts of, of Africa or the world it means that she's going to be able to make informed decisions bring up a child to understand the reality of equal opportunities and also help the rest of the community to understand why this needs to be done so let us all encourage um, one another if you have girl children or if you live or come from a community where you're seeing these kinds of discriminations what are you doing to change this narrative because as we all know if we do this collectively then we won't have to talk about things to do with sidelining the boy child because the boy child will actually already have been empowered enough for him to know that listen it's a world of equal opportunities and that is actually also one way of us um, getting to a point where we are saying we have generation equality yes there's gender equality but we will have generation equality um, so yeah, I, I don't know what you have to say about this, but I actually strongly believe um, that educating the girl child is, is very, very important. But I also think that in, in modern day Africa, it's funny that when we have conversations on giving equal opportunity uh, to both the girl and boy children, um, we forget that there's also the corporate world today where there's not enough or not equal opportunity that is given um, at that level so it comes from the lower levels and it meets you up there uh, when you actually get into the corporate world or get into a working age so if we can actually look inward outward it would help us to eliminate some of these stereotypes some of these cultural norms that we need to get past and give equal opportunities to everybody so I would like to hear from you and see what you have to say and I will be looking forward to reading some of your comments on Bira online down below um, yeah bye bye thanks for watching mm -hmm.